My name is Father Mike Barry. I'm a priest of the Congregation of Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. I'd like to address a little teaching again now to the uh, sectoral branch members. A sectoral branch member is a lay person who has made a commitment to really follow the spirituality of the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary, which is summed up in the charism. And charism is a gift that an order brings to the church. And our, our gift is the love and the heart of Jesus Christ as modeled by Mary. That's the gift. And we're getting to contact with that gift or we use that gift by contemplating live, living and proclaiming the love and the heart of Jesus as modeled by Mary. That's uh, the unfolding of the charism. That's how our spirituality is lived. We know how to live and to proclaim, maybe not proclaim as much, but proclaim, we witness, or we just say it. But the key word is contemplation. Contemplation is this word that's mixed up many times with just thinking and meditating. And neither one of them, neither one of them sort of um, captures the true meaning of contemplation. And let me try to give you an example of contemplation. And take a, a scripture passage, not a long passage, but maybe about 10 lines of scripture, especially the gospel or St. Paul's uh, writings, or the New Testament, basically. You can even use the Old Testament if you want. But you read it and you try to recall um, some words that you read. You try to recall some words that you read. Let's take the example of the uh, walking on the waters, or take example of the miracle of the fish, the fish miracle in the end of John's Gospel, where they caught so many fish. So we read that, and we think of words like fish, boat, maybe master, okay, again, things of that sort, the sea, the nets, all of that, those things. And then we uh, read it again, and we try to recall sentences, you know, put out into the deep. Put out into the deep, and you will catch something. Okay? Master, we've done this all night and caught nothing. Yeah, but if you say so, again, the understanding, you're moving now into a, trying to understand Scripture. And incidentally, the true meaning of Scripture is the literal meaning, what we read. Now you read it a third time, and you stop, and you go from meditating to what is being said here. What is being said here? What is being said here? You move away from yourself, your own thoughts, in a way, into what is being given to you by the Holy Spirit. You pray to the Holy Spirit to sort of infuse in me this meaning of what it means and what it means for me here and now. And like sentences like, put into the deep, our relationship with God has to go deep. It can't be superficial. It can't be superficial. How does it go deep? We have to begin to see what, who Jesus is, the person of Jesus. We have to begin to see the mission of Jesus. And there's a whole movement, there's a whole movement in this trying to comprehend, trying to comprehend action, action, interior action, action in our very soul, in our very soul. What, what is being said to us here and now in this moment, using a scriptural passage, using an awareness of, of God, you know, using a sense of, you know, see what Peter experienced, see what Peter experienced, you know, that whole sense of something that he was very familiar with, but yet it's not it's not the same anymore. It's not the same anymore. And that's basically what contemplation will reveal to us, something new, something new that God has for us this day through this piece of Scripture, through any other thought about God, any other thought about God, God's kindness, God's love, okay, but anything at all that will allow us to enter into it, but then allow God to move us, to move us. It's the power of the Spirit. And again, it's not sort of thinking our own thoughts. It's the thoughts of God. 
God's words, as it were, God's, God's purpose for us in using this. It's like we need to cross over a bridge, cross over a bridge, and not keep it to ourselves so much as we have, we found out the meaning of this passage. No, it's a little bit more than that. It's more than that to the extent that, you know, it's telling us about the person of Jesus Christ. It's per telling us about the love of God. It's telling us about the nature of God in our lives, in our lives. Maybe not so much in the life of somebody else, but that's where the living and proclaiming comes in. So when we live that and proclaim it, then we can uh, truly sort of find out what it means to be a secular branch member, to love, to, pro to meditate, to contemplate, live and proclaim the love in the heart of Jesus as modeled by Mary. And it's, it's an action. It's not so much, it may start out being passive, we're thinking, we're meditating, but it has to shift. Because if it doesn't shift, it won't yield too much. It'll yield thoughts, but it has to yield a sense of interior action. The soul is touched. The soul is touched, and the soul is sort of informed, informed by God's purpose for it at that moment, at that instant in our creation, in our lives. So again, as a secular branch member, we need to practice it. We need to practice it very, very much. And to understand our spirituality, and all of our spirituality lends to that, lends to the contemplation. Again, especially if we consider one of the exterior works, exterior works, but interior works as well, which is the adoration. We come before the Blessed Sacrament and we adore. We adore the, the living presence in the tabernacle, whether it's inside the tabernacle or outside of the tabernacle, doesn't make any difference. It is Jesus, it is Jesus Christ, body, soul, blood, and divinity there. And so we're praying to him, we're praising him, we're exalting him, we're um, worshiping in a, in a very real sense. And again, that sense of entering the presence of God is a part of contemplation as well. You know? And sometimes when we do adoration, we go in with a list. This is the list, Jesus, this is what I want, okay? That's not adoration, okay? That's petition. So what's important is that we go into the presence of God. You know, it's not like I go to visit you at the door and I ask, what's for dinner? I go in, you greet me, I greet you, and there's a sense of an exchange of friendship, of sort of recognition, identity of one another. That's what adoration begins with. We begin with that. It's a sort of contemplation as well. And to understand in that sense that we're cultivating, we're nurturing our vocation to uh, contemplate, live and proclaim the love in the heart of Jesus. Many people say, well, I'm a secular branch member of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. You know, and uh, that's, that's all. There's an awful lot more to it. An awful, there's a whole life that you're living. Are you living it as a secular branch member? No, I'm living it as a Catholic. <laughs> we have that. But yeah, you're living as a Catholic, but a Catholic of the secular branch of Jesus and Mary. As spirituality, we have equipment to allow us to come closer to Jesus, to allow Jesus to come closer to us, to allow us to experience the person of Jesus Christ in a very real sense. Because it's heart to heart, our heart to the heart of Jesus Christ, the most sacred heart of Jesus, and also the most sacred heart of Mary. We also refer to her as the Immaculate Heart. But before that, she was known as the Sacred Heart of Mary, very similar to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Okay, The sacredness, the holiness, the holiness that's involved in all of that. So again, when we talk about contemplation, you know, it's, it's a means, it's a tool that we use, but it's a tool that brings us experience. There is no substitute for experience. We pray prayers like the rosary, and yet we have to experience what we're praying. What I mean by that, the Annunciation, we have to experience that whole sense of the fullness of time God sent an angel to Mary to begin the whole process of our redemption. And also, like the other mysteries, 
so that we they're present to us. We're not just saying prayers by rote, by memory. Yes, we are in a sense, but they're accompanied by a thought process. They're accompanied by contemplation as well. So I share that with you because so many times people in the secular branch and even in the order itself, we have the charism. But do we live it? Does it live us? Which is very more, much more important. Does it live us? In other words, it's helping us. It's moving us toward Jesus Christ. It's giving us an experience that we know something good, something sacred, something holy has happened to us. So to contemplate really is the key that opens the door to our heart. I thank you so much for listening this morning. I thank you for listening. It is morning after all. And may God bless you. And may you have that gift of contemplation. In Jesus' holy name, amen.